So, uh, very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, welcome to the uh, Android graphics and animation session. So, my name is Mihir Gokani, and I am going to present on the graphics and animation on Android. So, uh, actually, me and my colleague uh, Pushpak Burange, we, are, we both are going to deliver on this. So, we will be switching. Uh, for some part, I will be explaining, and some part, he will be explaining. So, uh, the first thing that I want to, first of all, I will give you a brief outline of what we will be, te what we'll be de delivering. Uh, first of all, uh, I will start with a uh, drawing with canvas. So, I will explain a canvas in brief. The second thing uh, will be explained by Pushpak Burange, which is a view animation. Uh, then, I will be explaining a property animation, which is a kind of a main thing in, of this session. So, it will span uh, before break, I will start and uh, will take some a little break and after that, I will we'll, continue on this. And then again, Pushpak will uh, explain about OpenGL ES on Android. He will give a brief intro about this. So, uh, let us start with this, uh, the graphics and animation in Android. So, uh, before starting, uh, I want to uh, give a little tip that uh, we will be showing you demos on uh, Akash. So, I will be switching to the uh, Akash view uh, uh, frequently. So, uh, because since this is a graphic session, so uh, without, so we will get a visual interpretation of what, what will be, what we want to do on the Akash. So, we will be switching to the Akash frequently. So, let us start with the uh, canvas on Android. So, first, uh, a little motivation that why we need a uh, canvas for Android. Uh, first of all, canvas is allo canvas allows us to draw 2D uh, 2D drawing on canvas. So, for example, some uh, drawings we want to draw on, uh, for for example, we want to draw some flow charts, or we want to uh, we want to make a game which is a simple 2D game. For example, a chess 2D chess or uh, or any 2D games. Uh, for example, so we can uh, use canvas because it is uh, easy to use, easy to learn. Uh, the second thing is uh, custom UI. So, uh, custom for example, the default Android controls or views are not suitable for to you. So, you can uh, go for custom UI. For example, uh, the Facebook app is uh, developed in this way. So, they have developed their own custom UI on Android. Uh, in such a way, you can develop your own custom UI. The third is simple games, as I said. For example, uh, you can make uh, some chess games or uh, any simple 2D games. And uh, lastly, we can do any any 2D graphics and animation. So on canvas, we use canvas because it is very simple to uh, learn. Uh, so I'll uh, in this session, uh, I hope I'll give you some motivation about uh, how how we can use the canvas to develop your apps. So let's start. So, first I will explain uh, in brief, there are three steps to use canvas. The first step is get a reference of a canvas. So, in Java, we usually create a new object. So, in canvas also, we can create a new object of canvas, but uh, in that way, we can draw, for example, on a bitmap, uh, an image, and we can create that image and we can show it in the uh, Android. Uh, an easier method is to extend a uh, existing view for example, uh, and we can override its on draw method. So, for example, uh, we can draw a custom shapes on that view. And the third method is to extend a surface view or uh, open gel surface view, which is a more advanced topic and which is uh, which will not be covered in this session. Uh, Pushpak will give you some brief uh, idea about the open gel, but uh, the open gel uh, view will not be covered in this session. Uh, so, first step is referencing a canvas. So, uh, I'm, uh, I will only talk about extending a view, which is the, which was the second point of my uh, of one of the three points. So, uh, that in in this code you can see the the small snippet shows that we can override the on draw. So, we extend the view, and we override its on draw method. So, in on draw method, we get canvas as a parameter, and then we can use this canvas to draw any anything we want on this canvas. Uh, we can extend the view. 
and we can then override the on draw method which was the method of the view and then inside this we get a reference of canvas. So, we can use canvas and draw anything we want. Now, the second step is to actually draw. So, how we can draw on the canvas? So, we have two options. The first is use the draw something method of a canvas. So, canvas contains a set of methods for example, draw, draw rectangle, draw circle, draw text. So, in that way we can draw uh, anything we want. So, for example, here the code shows here this is the this is what we write inside the on draw method. So, here we, we have written draw circle and we have given some center of the center of the circle given the radius and given the paint. I will explain paint later uh, after a few slides uh, that is what uh, we can use to control how our circle looks actually actually control its attributes. Uh, second thing that uh, I have written is draw rectangle we can we can set its bounds that is left right top and bottom of the rectangle. Uh, the third thing is I have written draw text. Uh, so, I have written uh, that what what actually what text actually we want to draw uh, that is a string or a resource ID of the string and at which position we want to draw and again in all the methods we can pass the reference to paint which I will explain later. Our second option uh, to draw is to use a drawable. So, for example, uh, drawable is uh, for example, if you want to draw some shapes so, there are there is a class which is called a shape drawable. So, for example, there is a rectangle drawable, there is a, a oval drawable etcetera. So, we can use its draw method and pass the our canvas in it. So, it will draw itself on that canvas. So, uh, actually uh, which option to use is your choice uh, in simple to in si if you, if you want simply to draw something, you can use the first option uh, in which we have written uh, uh, draw something method, draw rectangle or something of canvas. And in this, uh, of if you want to use the draw method of a drawable, uh, it is a bit more advantageous because we can customize the view or customize the attributes of the shape uh, later. I will show a brief demo of it. Uh, so, I think uh, the demo, I will show the demo now. So, I will show you with the first demo, which was the demo of using a canvas, which is done by using a draw circle, draw all and draw rectangle methods. So, uh, here I have shown you uh, two, two, ob two objects, which are drawn on a canvas. And the second demo is about uh, drawable dot draw. So, so this is the drawable dot draw. We have drawn a, a circle which is our shape drawable on canvas. So here um, I have not set the paint uh, which was the last at last attribute last parameter of our method. So I have not set the paint, but uh, so it is uh, looking black, but. Uh, in the earlier example, I have set the paint so that it was looking blue. So, that is the use of paint that I will explain later. Uh, the third step is to redraw. So, so far we have seen uh, the two things that uh, how to draw uh, using canvas, uh, but now that is not enough because in some cases, for example, if you are you if you are developing a game, in that you want to uh, do some interaction with the canvas. For example, when you touch it should uh, change some attributes, it, it should uh, move the object somewhere. So, uh, we want the canvas to get updated uh, when we touch on that canvas. So, uh, we change some attributes of the canvas of some shapes and then we redraw it. We cannot directly redraw or we cannot directly call the on draw method, but uh, what we do is we in invalidate the canvas so that it. Uh, it's, it says that Android that uh, some attributes I have changed. So, you can um, now redraw the canvas. So, uh, so for example, here there is a invalidation example. So, I have used, uh, I have written this code inside an on touch method. Uh, so, you can see the code later uh, in the examples, but the uh, main focus of this thing is that we set the bounds of the 
our drawable according to the where the user has touched and we can add add the drawable into the uh, an array list and then invalidate the canvas so in our on draw method we have just written that uh, draw everything which is in drawables the array list so uh, when we touch on this canvas for example i have touched here so if i don't write the invalidate in the last line then the canvas will not get updated and the results will not be shown so uh, it is a critical thing that uh, we must invalidate it but remember that more you invalidate the, the more calls will be made to on draw method and if you keep invalidating then uh, it is a bad practice because uh, uh, the more on draw calls will be used and more uh, power will be used of your device. So uh, you must think that when exactly you want to invalidate, where exactly you want to redraw your canvas. So for example, I have just redrawn when I touch the canvas. So uh, it gets updated whenever I touch and the circle is drawn on that math, on that at that point, for example. So uh, yes, so now I want, so and I, now I want to clarify the point that I have made that where exactly to draw. So this is the example how not to draw. So remember that it is only a request to Android system that now my attributes are changed and I want to redraw it. But it is not always guaranteed uh, that Android system will redraw on the spot. So it might uh, reject the request because uh, there are too many other requests that it, it has to handle. So. Uh, it is not actually guaranteed. So, if you if you think that you will you can animate a, some shape inside a on draw method by just looping through a looping through a variable and drawing at that variable and then invalidating it, so it won't work because uh, this the on draw method completes after, only after this entire loop has been completed and once the uh, the Android system on, can only draw after. Uh, it after the line of control uh, gets out of the on, on draw method. So this invalidate has no effect other than just uh, putting your request in the invalidation queue. So a better approach is to use this post invalidate method. This post invalidate method is used uh, if there is some other thread from which you are making a request to invalidate it. So in this example, you must create your another thread because uh, as soon as you create another thread, your line of con uh, line of control uh, gets out of the on draw method. For example, this is the same example, but inside a run inside a new thread. So this entire code is actually inside the on draw method. So now, uh, as soon as this thread is created and we start the thread, uh, the line of control goes out of the on draw method, and this. Uh, we can't write invalidate here because it is the another thread. So we must write post invalidate, which makes a request to the uh, UI thread about the redraw and refreshing the thread. There is a small demo of it. This this is a small demo of it. So we can write the. Now, I'll explain you about the paint. That was the last argument of our. Uh, uh, discussion earlier of uh, how to draw things. So we can set a number of attributes uh, of paint. For example, we can change the color, we can change the style, we can change the outline of the of uh, outline that is a stroke of our shapes. Uh, we can change uh, style of our text, even even the style of our text. For example, here I've shown we can set the color and we can pass an integer which is a color value. So we, you can get that rep that integer from the color class and uh, there are a set of methods that from uh, ARGB value you can get the, uh, that integer value of color or you can get uh, enum values for example color dot black will give you a black color color dot blue will give you a blue color you can even set some flags for example you want to turn on dithering or you want to turn on the anti anti alias then you can use these flags on the paint uh, on the paint object to turn this on or turn, th turn this off. Uh, you can set the text size for example and pass it float value for example you want 32 pixels so you can pass the 32px uh, 32 float value so 32.0. 
you can set the alignment uh, which is the part of align enum so you can uh, set the text alignment on this and you can pass this paint object as a reference to the large parameter of our draw draw calls so we have seen uh, we can draw how we can draw on the uh, canvas but and we can extend the view uh, and to get a reference of a canvas so for example here i have shown you the view of a uh, uh, which is placed on the canvas so now i'll explain where is the uh, what the coordinate system is used by this canvas so here is the view uh, and this is the coordinate system which is actually used by the canvas so that here the top left corner shows the origin of our canvas so for example and the x x axis is on the right hand side and the y axis increases in the bottom so since uh, anything we draw we draw outside the outside of our view is not actually visible so i will just uh, show you this much of grid uh, instead of showing the entire grid entire coordinate system so for example we want to show a point 94 which is 9 9 pixels in x axis and 4 pixels in y axis so which is actually drawn at this point which is highlighted in red so now uh, a little uh, tips for the uh, users who want to do some uh, who are who will learn the canvas and this is some advanced tips for example if you want to translate multiple objects so what you normally might think is you can you if for example you want to translate it uh, 2 pixels uh, minus 2 pixels on x axis and minus 1 pixel on y axis so for example you want to move your object which is at 9 4 to some some uh, point for example you you now you want now you will cal calculate uh, the difference now you will calculate the actual position for example you want to move it minus 2 pixels on the left so you will subtract minus 2 from 9 and you will add one into the uh, the y coordinate to get the our new coordinate so now there is a problem that uh, if you have uh, hundreds of objects and you want to uh, move them simultaneously then you will have to compute for each and every object uh, a new coordinate system and then you will have to set it uh, for each and every object however we can translate our coordinate system for example here i have shown that we have translated our coordinate system minus two minus two pixels uh, in the x axis and one pixel on the y axis so our entire coordinate system has been translated so when we now plot 9.4 9 uh, in the x axis and 4 in the y axis our object will be drawn uh, translated and all the objects which will which we draw later will be translated uh, the translation is a little uh, little easier so you might think i'll calculate the translation for each and every object however for rotation there is a problem that you want to uh, do with trigonometry for each and every object and com compute the new new uh, new coordinates uh, however the you can uh, easily rotate the entire canvas and get the new coordinate system on which you can draw so i'll show a, a little sample that uh, for now just keep the lines which are marked at line A and in this canvas dot rotate 0 F means we are rotating 0 degrees so we are not rotating our canvas and we are drawing our balls at 50, 50 in the x axis and uh, all of the balls are drawn on the y axis as 0 so and uh, we are drawing 3 balls blue, red and green now we want to rotate only blue and red balls so what we can do is we can say canvas dot rotate and some degrees the angle in degrees so here we can pass for example 15 degrees 15 f so it will be rotated 15 f however all three balls will be rotated since they are drawn on the same canvas so for this we are using canvas dot save which is and canvas dot restore which are marked as line A. So now the state of the canvas before this save call will be saved. For example, here there was no rotation. So it will be saved that there is no rotation. And once we restore it, 
that saved state will be restored again. So there is no rotation at this ball. So now when we say canvas dot rotate 15f, so only the balls which are drawn between the save and restore calls will be rotated and the any any call to the drawing of the ball which is uh, after the restore call will not be rotated because uh, we have just restored our canvas. So the green ball stays at, at the same position. Now uh, uh, just a small tip that you can also uh, define your drawables inside uh, the XML file. So all the drawables are, will be taken as a gradient drawable. So I have talked about shape drawable which is uh, rectangles or circles but there are also something called gradient drawables which are for example uh, we, we can define the draw, uh, gradient uh, on the drawable, the gradient colors in the drawable. So uh, whatever we define in our XML will be treated as a gradient drawable. So you can define your XML in a drawable folder inside the resources folder uh, you can name your some anything you anything you want dot xml and you can recall it later uh, the id will be given as r dot drawable dot file dot anything that you have named earlier and how you can use that uh, again later if you want to use it again in the xml for example in a some view for example text view you want to set the background of that text view or background of a button then you can simply write Android background and then give a reference to that gradient. However, if you want, if you want to get a reference inside a Java, then you will write, uh, you will get a reference to resources of current activity and then you can call a get drawable method passing the uh, ID of that drawable and then you can uh, do whatever you want to do with that drawable. For example, here I have set the background of that drawable. So it actually simplifies uh, how you can uh, use the drawables inside your canvas. So now uh, I have covered a canvas, I have covered a basics of canvas. Uh, now the animation part uh, will be uh, explained uh, from now on. So Pushpak will uh, explain you about the view animation and then we'll continue with the property animation and open shield. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello and welcome to this uh, tutorial on view animation. My name is Pushpak Burange uh, and I am a student here in the Department of Computer Science at IIT Bombay. Uh, so in this tutorial, uh, we will be covering view animation. Uh, so before going on to view animation, uh, let me, let me uh, quickly uh, talk about what is animation first of all. So if you look up the definition of uh, animation in Wikipedia, uh, it, uh, animation is a rapid display of a sequence of images to create an illusion of uh, a movement. So when we see a sequence of images uh, one after the other, our brain perceives it as movement. So that is the basic principle of uh, animation. Uh, so what are the examples of animation? Uh, games, cartoons, uh, I am sure all of you have played Angry Birds. Uh, and, and watch various cartoons while growing up, we all have. So uh, they are the examples of uh, animation. Uh, and thirdly, uh, what one would like to know is why, why would we want to study animation? Uh, you see, uh, a lot of educational applications uh, uh, can be built by using uh, animation, uh, uh, say animating science experiments or animating computer algorithms and many such things. So uh, there, there's a lot of work that goes in uh, IIT Bombay uh, in, in the field of animation for education. Uh, so what are the kinds of animations on Android? Uh, so there are uh, basically four kinds of animations on Android. Uh, they are view animation, uh, property animation, which will be covered by Mihir Gokani uh, after this session. Uh, then there's a canvas and drawable, and the final one is OpenGL. Uh, of these methods, OpenGL is the most generic and also the toughest method of animation. Uh, and you can really develop superb applications using OpenGL and real life-like animations using OpenGL. But it's, it's very tough to do. And it requires uh, knowledge of uh, linear algebra and matrix theory uh, so in order for you to become proficient in OpenGL. Uh, we'll be talking about OpenGL very briefly in this session, but uh, I don't think we can cover the maths of OpenGL because uh, it, it's mostly the out of the scope of this syllabus. 
So, we will only be talking about view animation in this session and property animation afterwards. Uh, so, first of all, what is a view? In Android, uh, anything like a text view or a image view is, is a view basically. So, uh, in, in view animation, in, in this session, we will uh, look at uh, animating uh, a text view. What we will do is that we will take a text view and we will just translate it a little bit. Uh, and that is, that is going to be our illustration in, the, in today's session. Okay, uh, so, what are the kind of effects that you can do in view animation? Uh, well, you can rotate the text, you can translate, you can change its color, you can shrink it, you can enlarge it, uh, and those kind of things. So, uh, uh, anyways, these are very basic effects. Uh, so, after uh, after learning the basics, uh, I, I encourage you to learn more on your own because, like, there are a lot of things to learn, uh, which we we can't cover uh, in this session together. Okay, so uh, getting started. First of all, uh, the animation that you want to do is defined in a ANIM directory inside the resources folder of your Android project. Uh, the, anim, the ANIM folder might not be there initially, you have to create it. So, after creating the ANIM folder inside the resources directory, you have to place your XML uh, which, which defines the translation, we will look at it, inside that, uh, inside that ANIM directory. So, let me quickly go to the uh, IDE to show you the, uh, the code. We are seeing the XML here. Uh, this is the XML that uh, defines our uh, animation. So, if I if I have to animate a view, I have to use this XML for that. So, uh, here uh, the wheels, we see a field from x delta and to x delta, which means that uh, uh, which this indicates the initial and the final position of our view. So, this with this XML will translate our view 100 pixels towards its right. If I want to translate it towards its left, I simply change this with a minus sign. Similarly, uh, if I want to translate it on the y axis, I use the from y delta and to y delta. Uh, another parameter here is the android duration, which is the duration of the animation. Uh, it is mentioned in milliseconds and here it is 2000 milliseconds, which is uh, equal to 2 seconds. So, uh, this is the XML in which we define our, uh, our animation. And if you notice, it's it's uh, inside the ANIM directory in my resources folder. So uh, for performing animations, uh, we need to use the object of a class known as the animation class. Uh, so if you if you want, basically the animation class just loads the animation from the XML into the memory. That is the function of the animation class. So we'll look at how how uh, to use a animation class, the object of an animation class. So uh, this is a a standard API for defining uh, an animation object. Uh, you have to pass the context and the XML as a as a as an argument to the uh, the animation object, and this will load the animation into the memory from the XML for you. And then later you can use this animation object to create to uh, to create animations. So once again, we'll go to the ID and have a look at the code. So uh, this is the code uh, here. Uh, this is our text view, our text which are which we are going to translate. Uh, this is the animation object that we have defined using the API that I just showed to you. Uh, this is the API for uh, for creating the object of uh, the class animation. Uh, and next, we uh, we are going to uh, use this object to create a translating effect. Uh, so, for any view, uh, like, like let's say a text view, there's a, a, a method uh, which is called start animation, uh, which is used to complete the, uh, the animation effect. So, uh, in this method, we are going to pass the object of the class animation that we just created. And so, uh, as you can see, uh, our translate text is our text view, and uh, we've called start animation on that uh, translate text to complete our uh, animation effect. So, uh, we'll go to the ID. Yeah. So here uh, we have called the start animation method on uh, our text view, uh, and that happens every time we click on the screen. Uh, so that gives us the animation effect. So uh, I'll I'll take you to the demo now on the uh, on the tab. So so this is the text uh, in the left hand corner just above my finger. Uh, this is the text, and I, as I touch it, it's getting translated by 100 pixels towards its right in about two seconds. I'll I'll do it once again. I'll, as I touch it, it gets translated, right? Yeah. So that is the effect uh, that was uh, produced by using an object of an animation class and using an XML. Uh, Triggering multiple animations. So, uh, on on an object of a class animation, you can set an animation listener, uh, which gives three methods with it, which are animation start, 
animation repeat and animation end. And these methods are basically callbacks that get called whenever the animation starts, whenever the animation is repeated and whenever an animation ends. Uh, so you can, it is possible to trigger multiple animations on a single click if you call start animation inside on animation end because it is a callback that gets called when animation ends and if you call start animation at the end inside on animation end it will trigger multiple animations. Uh, so finally I would just like to give a quick summary of what we did, uh, how to do view animation, it is very simple. First we create a XML that has the animation inform information inside it, then we load that information into an animation object and then finally we call, we pass that animation uh, object uh, 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 to a view to complete our animation. That is how view animation is done. Thank you.